around on the on, on the sides as well and also on that side and the top which that is called the kanda um, and then you've got this one here which is just called the ekom gar <coughs> the ekom gar means there is one god yeah that's what that means might say to you, you know, take your shoes off in the hallway, don't walk in um, there. It's just to keep the carpet clean um, and also because you don't really want to be sitting somewhere where there's other people's footprints. So you would then um, just, you know, take your shoes off outside. Yep. The ceiling is quite low. The ceiling's quite low, yeah. With older buildings, with like churches, uh, they <coughs> do have quite high ceilings, whereas this is quite a, a new building compared to uh, the churches in Derby. Um, so it's kind of built so to fit more people in. There is another hall upstairs as well, which we'll be taking a look at later on. Um, yep, you have to cover your head. And that's a mark of respect, um, to cover your head before you come in. Um, I don't know if you, any of you guys have been to a Baptist church beforehand. Um, the similarity, kind of a similarity between here and a Baptist church, is that at a Baptist church you would have to take any head covering off. Um, so if you do have a similar similar thing with head coverings um, whereas here you have to leave it on there you have to take it off okay this this place here it's it's like a throne basically um, it's uh, where the Guru Granth Sahib would be placed um, does anybody know what the Guru Granth Sahib is yes it's the, the Sikhs holy scriptures just like the Bible is for uh, Christians uh, Sikhs have the Guru Granth Sahib and that would be placed on this area here. Um, to, to treat it with respect uh, and to treat it like a, like a king, basically, uh, they would have it on this bed or throne-like area. Um, and it's above where our feet would be to make sure that we don't have our feet um, you know, uh, above it or anything like that. Um, and it's above where people would, would sit as well. Um, out of respect. Api tante pantan salapi api khandas pe api dasarvan upani jit suru kelo se maniyai tante lagya salapi.
Right, okay, this mosque is about 30 years old. The entrance, that push, entrance as you put it, that you come through is actually <coughs> new. That's just about a year old. It was part of the car park, but as you can see, it's been transformed. Uh, a lot of things go on in this mosque. Apart from praying, we have celebrations, like I mentioned. We have teachings here. You might think the mosque is empty now. It's not empty. We have adults here that are having classes upstairs. They're here to study the Quran. They're here to study the meaning of the Quran. They are here to learn how to read the Quran because they didn't have the opportunity as a child. Yeah? So there is a lot going on. And also we have children coming to the mosque to learn how to read the Quran after school. <coughs> so when your school finishes at, I don't know, 3 o'clock, half 3. Yeah? When your school finishes at half 3, you go home, you go on the Xbox, go play footy, netball, I don't know, go to the gym, whatever, you, whatever it is you guys do. Our children have to, if they've got time, have their tea quickly and get ready for the mosque or the other way around, depends which class, which class they're going to, the first, well, first one or the second one, they don't even have time for the tea, they've got to have to make the special wash, get ready and go to the mosque to learn how, how to read the Quran. Okay, and also we have funerals here as well. The reason we have funerals here, because as you've noticed, it's a big place. This mosque holds 4,500 people, yeah? And it's an easy place to find, especially when people come from out of town, they can ask around and they can find this rather than somebody's house. When we have a funeral, when somebody dies, most, as, as a Muslim, they have to be buried as soon as possible. You think they celebrate Christmas on the 25th of December? Do you? No. Yeah, well, no. I'm a Muslim, I don't celebrate Christmas. But you're kind of right, because my daughter does. She says, Mom, bring on the presents, it's Christmas. Yeah? We have our own Christmases. In fact, we have two. We have one to mark the end of Ramadan, and then we have one about six weeks later, later which marks Hajj. Yeah? Yeah? Do you always have to come here to pray? Or do you like pray at home? Well, men have to come and pray in the mosque. Yeah? It's a must. Unless they've got a valid reason, meaning they're late for work, or they live too far from work, from, from the mosque, they're going to be late to drop their children off or get late to work. That's a different matter. Otherwise, they have to come to mosque, and when they come and pray at the mosque, this is actually a men's hall. Women pray upstairs, we pray separately. The, 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 them times are set, the service will start at those times. Women are more than welcome to come to the mosque, but they don't have to come to the mosque. Derby. Um, that at the mosque you always get cremated and never buried and that you always have to have a full body wash and take your shoes off before you go in. I believe they have a, caf a cafeteria for um, to give free food to people because they believe everyone has equal rights. In the Gurdwara you have to take off your shoes first and then um, wash your hands to like show respect to them. Yeah, but in the mosque you still have to take off your shoes but instead of just washing your hands, you wash your whole body. I learned that Sikh, the Sikhs believe that everyone is equal and when they're praying they can the women and the men are separate. However if they but they don't have to be, they can sit with their family if they want to. Muslims have to fast for more. We found out that they read the Quran from right to left. In the Gurdwara, you could get curry even if you weren't a Sikh. Also, baptised Sikhs wear a dagger even at school. So when you were walking between the Gurdwara and the mosque, what did you notice that was different about that part of Derby to going shopping at Westfield? Uh, well, there was a lot more shops with saris because obviously it's got a lot more um, Sikhs and Muslims around there. Um, the, in the sari shop, the saris were like really colourful and like beautiful and stuff. And it was very cultural, so it's more than one religion around there. Is visiting the mosque and the Gurdwara in Derby a really good thing to do as part of a PRS lesson in this school? 
Mm, yeah, definitely because like you find out a lot more because you don't just like learn about it like you get your kind of point of view. It's a great trip, trip that everyone should go on because it's very informative and joyful. Yes, I think everyone should go on it because it's interesting, it's immersive, it's exciting and you get to see it from the point of view of the worshipper.